Good afternoon, professors, colleagues, and friends. Today, I will highlight some on the future of hemodialysis. Our agenda will be the current hemodialysis and future with innovations in the understanding of the ionic milieu, as well innovations in data management and artificial intelligence, focusing on the wearable and artificial kidney. Also, we will highlight some of the innovation in the vascular access type, hemodialysis machines, and hemodialysis membranes. So, before going to the topic, the future of hemodialysis, my view is that many of the challenges, including covering more patients, lowering the costs, saving waters, especially in countries suffering from limited resources of water, more physiological, more prolonged, more frequent dialysis, and the more removing of toxins with more permeable hemodialysis membrane. So hemodialysis is not just a bridging to renal transplantation, with improving is a must of quality of life as well improving in the mortality, with extending the therapies to all who needs in poor countries with a wearable or bioartificial kidney that submitted for more 24 over 24 hours of therapy. The balancing between cost and service is the main target in the future of renal replacement therapy to cover more patients with the same budget. And dispelling the myths of providing dialysis in low and middle income countries with five pieces at least. The misses and challenging of that, the first myth is fewer patients receiving dialysis in low-medium income countries than in high-income countries. The prevalence is very high, extending 1,000 and drop to 20 to 200 patients per million in low-medium income countries. Second myth is diseases prevention is always better than treatment, while the third myth is given the high financial burden of the disease cost sharing policies. The fourth means is affordability is the main barrier. Reality, access to dialysis is considered not only by financial resources but also by human resources and geographical factors. The fifth means is effective treatment options for kidney failure exist and investment should be focused on making them accessible to all. This is the main method and challenging for the future dialysis, focusing to overcome a lot of patients in coming. So current and the project prevalence of kidney parents, the difference between the current and who are already in need is very big. So we have to cover more patients requiring dialysis and subsequently after 10 years, the number will be more and more increasing in number to patients requiring dialysis. So the future needs support to low-income countries by transferring the technology and the human resources, saving more lives. One of the great challenges in the future of dialysis is to cover a lot of patients who require and subsequently saving lives. The future of dialysis is not a new issue. It's reported years ago, 50 years ago, discussing that future of dialysis is a must where we are. Did we have cough wishes 40 years ago? It's a question. And subsequently, futures of dialysis to improve the overall patient's outcome, as in renal transplantation, and having a better quality of life. When you look to the dialysis membranes as well as dialysis populations, the cost is exceeding high, while the development of more permeable dialysis membranes with high flux over low flux is increasing in demands. And the size of course is exceeding billions of dollars 
as a cost of denying hemodialysis programs. As was the progress of the number of patients requiring hemodialysis all over the globe, the innovation should as well run enhance. So the technology roadmap for innovative approach to renal replacement therapy, changing the renal replacement therapy paradigm that will impact the end-stage renal disease, and the urgent need to invest in renal replacement therapy to catch the most up-to-date technology to improve the overall progress of the patients who have a better quality of life as well better survival. And overcoming these obstacles to innovative renal replacement therapy, the biological function of the kidney is the main coronary stone in the future. Giving the tubular function as a part in the partner of the filtration therapy of the current hemodialysis serve. And the roadmap looking to the future, while the current state, we have to go to patient-centered approach, increased investment with a multidisciplinary collaboration to improve the overall care of therapy. We need a plenty of food and more physiological therapy can enjoy free days with higher quality of life and all CKD in need of hemodialysis should be covered in a cost-effective way. With improved patient quality of life, all solutions meet minimum design requirements, either enhanced dialysis, portable and wearable devices, biohybrid implantable devices, as well as regenerated kidney size. So the main four targets of the future was enhanced dialysis in short term, portable and biohybrid implantable device as well as regenerated uh, kidney. The regenerated kidney example replaced fibrosis with normal nephrons and vasculatures, while the portable and the wearable device will highlight it later in this talk and the implantable biohybrid devices. So the goal is overall improvement of the therapy as well increasing the survival and the quality of life mimics the renal replacement therapy in transplanted patients. The kidney regenerative medicine advancement of novel technologies in the field of zero transplantation and transplantable devices are showing progress towards the design of de novo replacement organs. While enhanced dialysis like interdialytic ultrafiltration device seeking the goal of encouraging incremental improvement to existing dialysis therapy and the benefit is increased treatment flexibility with reduced disease complications. This is a current application for improvement. What we had learned from the pandemic, we have to invest more in healthcare, future disasters, balancing economics and uh, in the pandemics. More than 800 millions with CKD, 3 millions only are in currently in renal replacement therapy, duplicating numbers in 10 years. Chronic kidney disease is a major emerging global public health problem that affects more than 850 million population, and the status of current care is suboptimal for sure. With the current modalities are non-physiological, resulting in washout, which means that patients after dialysis feeling unwell with increasing repound of uronic toxins as we are only removing from the blood. The landscape of dialysis in the futures, we have to focus on the patient priorities, 
not only on the KT over V or the rare reduction ratio, top-down efforts by government agencies and societies, bottom up the effort. The goal is the low-cost options, water-efficient technology, technology that more closely mimics the kidney function, better toxin removal, improved mortality and mortality, as well improvement in the physical and the mood symptoms. This is our goal, our dream in renal replacement therapy. The current and future landscape of dialysis, the global dialysis, is growing rapidly. So we have to cope with the technology and the upcoming increase in number. The green dialysis, saving more water, especially in countries with reduced resources of water, as well it should be in the management of our future. And the world map in the Middle East has a very shortage of water, and we have to think about that closely. With the development as well of water treatment stations that is compact and more efficient by distillators, and this should enhance the patient's outcome with improving the hemodialysis therapy at the whole project in the short term plan with improvement of the patient's well being, anemia, organ stunning, preventing control point disease, minimal inflammation, as well as prevent cardiovascular disease. Multidisciplinary teams are required in this issue, and this is the field of research in all items of CKD patients. And the two patient needs should be considered in the future. Can travel, enjoy hemodialysis three days, eat free, no pain, no depression, as well no family or social turbulence. The target is live stronger on dialysis. Not only live longer, but as well live stronger. Adequacy of hemodialysis and safety of ultrafiltration rate with green ultrafiltration is important for organ stunning and improve the cardiovascular complications. While digital health in the technology of information communication technologies have been improving in the artificial intelligence way with the mobile health, precision medicine, telehealth, wearable devices, Telehealth solution is important to communicate well with centers of dialysis and technology innovation in hemodialysis contribute to better patients' outcome. The innovations in hemodialysis top six in the field with understanding the kinetic modeling, the home dialysis evolution, improving the vascular access, creating insights for the information wearable and implantable device and innovations in hemodialysis equipment and hemodialysis membranes. Putting as well as a complication of sarcopenia and frailty of patient, we should manage the metabolic profile of all the patient's inflammatory disorders as well as nutritional disorders. So the barriers of future of dialysis is the intermittency of the thrice weekly dialysis inadequacy of the knowledge of toxins, hemodialysis is blind, removing the good and the bad, the combined water and solid toxicity, the patient's vice and requirement of depression and the machine dependency is important. The aerobic toxins have been evaluated a lot, starting from 100, exceeding now thousands of retained molecules in the body and contribute to the complications of the long-term dialysis. More convection therapy is required with higher ultrafiltration rate. For sure, subsequently hemodifiltration is one of the innovation in the current status. And convection therapy is improved, removing more patients, requiring dialysis in the field of removing
conceptualized of the complications of dialysis population. So going to the data management and artificial intelligence behavior, data is only eliminating hope for improvement, non-restrictive and non-limited. And innovations in hemodialysis insight from information with medical observation, multiple information, laboratory and physical examination, with subsequent capturing of data, offering better insight, as well information may be physiological data, environmental data, or functional information. The artificial intelligence will work on dialysis soon with big data system digitizations, analysis, and insights, giving the best perfect fitting for individualized patients. And artificial intelligence, as well with an uncontact sensor device to monitoring vital parameters, not only on dialysis, but probably when the patient as well at home, alarming for complications. So artificial intelligence based prediction of clinical event on the going years will be taking the upper hand with the use of non-contact sensors in clinical settings. More personalization of patients focusing on patient at risk, so improving the mortality, improving the efficacy and safety and the quality of care and dialysis, going more and more improvement in the home dialysis process by learning, teaching and equipment availabilities. and is to travel by portable devices with a portable water system is currently in the field of dialysis and it's applied real now and innovative dialysis treatment being recognized with more convenient portable device with emergency self-dialysis that should improve the outcome and survival of patients in particular flows and potassium overload states. So the home dialysis is multi-systemic point that increasing uh, nowadays in European as well in USA with the teledialysis monitoring the system and it can monitoring all the complications as well the uh, ther therapeutic challenges during the sessions of hemodialysis. Coming to the wearable device and the bioartificial kidney, the future of dialysis. Wearable artificial kidney and implantable artificial kidney live untethered, live more freely. With the first generation of portable devices that improved in technology going to the wearable artificial kidney and finally to the implantable bioartificial kidney. Could a portable dialysis machine improve their lives? Yes, it should by more filtration and the biosensors and these biosensors improve the quality of dialysis as well monitoring function in particular here in this new technology of the tubular function that is missing from the filtration function of the current hemodialysis serum. The hemodialysis therapy in that filtration and the biosensor will have the function of the tubules inside so the metabolic profile is going to be hand in hand with the filtration function of the glomerulus. The wearable artificial kidney and implantable artificial kidney needs more and more precise technology for the safety and adequacy. The ambulatory hemodialysis technology landscape on the wearable and implantable dialysis needs to measure key for the vascular axis, anticoagulations, and serpents for regeneration of the dialysis. 
The key requirements include dialysis membranes. Dialysis membranes should be non-fouling, so protein adsorption and thrombogenicity to avoid biofouling and clotting. Dialysate regenerations, safe and effective vascular access with subcutaneously implantable vascular access device, blood pumping system, as well patient monitoring system. So this is a progress in the development and challenges for the use of artificial kidney and wearable device, and your long-standing technology on that smart kidney with the pyre sensors, artificial kidney device that's swallowable on the pack, this computer system, dialysis box system, smart watch for monitoring, probable ECG blood pressure, temperature, oxygen saturation alarming system, with emerging technologies derived from artificial intelligence and machine learning. M much innovation on artificial and slow is needed before we could achieve a smart dialysis machine able to analyze and understand changes in patient homeostasis, respond appropriately in real time with the technology advancement required include machine size, network connectivity, and computing efficiency. And this is the mapping for the artificial kidney in the wearable device with the blood inlet, filters, and the blood outlet with a lot of the dialysate regenerating systems with pyre sensors. On the other hand, the implantable artificial kidney coming earlier on the preclinical studies that depends mainly on a silicon nanotechnology with a pyroreactive renal tubule, so has the glomerular as well as the tubular function with the filtration, metabolic function, controlling electrolytes and controlling the fluid balance for sure 24 hours working devices with blood inlet and the blood outlet as well filtrate that could be drained by the, the device into the platter. And this is a device that is in and out blood flow and filtrate. So the implantable is implantable to the vasculature with blood pumping system. I hope that it comes on light on the next years. The pyroartificial kidney, the theory is depending on seeding of the dialysis membranes, nanoscaling and nano fabrications of renal tubules. And these renal tubules can absorb protein pound uranic toxins on the organic anion transporters and this lining of the pews would have a metabolic function on a hemofilter dialysis membranes with a monolayer with five junctions and surface coating and this bioartificial kidney could improve that meaning the renal of the solar cell and needs the future works in this field to overcome the challenges of the availability of the renal tubular cells. Regenerating the vascular axis is important and the patient monitoring system. So, however, questions around implantable techniques, device, lifetime, ultrafiltration control, periodic maintenance will require further consideration. On retinal dialysis technology, the wearable portable dialysis machine based on continuous flow of retinal dialysis regenerating continuously circulating and refreshing by means of small and wearable units that remove toxins which improve BD clearance significantly up to twice the current plans. Finally, the omics has been improved to identify more neuronic toxins. It's out of the scope of this talk, but it's a neuronic toxin is expanding from coming genomics, epigenomics, proteomics, glycemics, as well as the metabolomics functions with the DNA, RNA proteins with the biochemical and biological phenotypes. 
Innovation in vascular the current and future of the vascular access technology had been increasing in innovations in dialysis vascular access. Whatever the arteriovenous fistula, arteriovenous grafting, endovascular surgery, central venous system coating. Improving the technology in the caster design, caster coating both externally and internally with improvement of the caster material. Hemodialysis machine had been as well developed with the new technology of crosstalk between patients' data as well as the therapeutic parameters with a pulp feedback guide, including blood volume monitoring devices to control the ultrafiltration, with pulp feedback dialysis for hypotension and hypervolemia, increasing that guided ultrafiltration pulp feed system to reduce intradialytic hypotension episodes and hemodialysis sessions, online monitoring of the performance by KT over V as well measuring the hemoscan, with the feedback system regulating volemia and natremia based on dialysate electrolyte system, and importantly, the biofeedback system in hemodial filtration to avoid filter clogging and filter fouling during the high volume hemodial filtration therapy. Therapeutic challenge as well developed for extended and expanded hemodialysis with more convection therapy in hemodial filtration and hemodial filtration therapy as well from the extended with its expanded therapy of ranges of uremic toxin removal. Development in membranes was higher saving on the current status with medium cut off, high cut off membranes, and super flux membranes. The medium cut off in the clinical use, high cut off still needs more attention for its albumin, great albumin loss. So the graph of the flux had been moving to the right from the low flux to high flux and super flux to the medium cut of uh, dialysis membranes to improve the quality of dialysis by removing more uremic toxins in the middle molecules range. With the development of expanded hemodialysis, removal of the higher molecular weight is accessible right now. So in conclusion, the development and innovation of hemodialysis techniques and membrane are complementary added by information communication technology, artificial intelligence, implantable devices, and wearable artificial kidneys, the future of hemodialysis is to give more on the intervention of the therapy by the highest technology available, as well by covering almost the patients are in need, especially in low-income low -income countries. Research is the bridge between ideas and its realization. Thank you very much.